Danny, Carla, I am so excited to be talking with you today. Uh, Son of, Sons of Anarchy was a favorite of mine, but I had always felt that um, the Hispanics were always seen as the bad guys, bad guys. And I always wanted to see the other side of the story. And luckily we got Mayans, which uh, congratulations. And now you're on your third season. How does that feel? It feels amazing. <laughs> it feels so good to be, uh, to be back for season three, especially in this time, which is a weird and special time. So we're really lucky that we got to film the whole season with, uh, without anyone getting sick and follow, following all the protocols. That's actually fantastic news. Uh, did we lose Danny or, or is he just very, very still? Here, I'm here, I don't know, am I? Okay, now, now we see, yeah. <laughs> I was just double checking. My back, uh, all right. And so I wanna jump into something very, very dark and deep uh, because it, it's something that both of your characters are going through. Um, and um, your character, Carla Adelita, is, is now a mother, uh, but unfortunately, uh, there's this dastardly man named Potter, who's one of the best villains I've seen on television. And at the same time, uh, Danny, your character, uh, Miguel, has just lost her, his mother. Uh, can you can you um, talk a little bit, uh, maybe we're not too spoilery, of course, but how your characters are going to be dealing with their losses? Um, should I go first? Please. Okay. Um, for Adelita, it's going to be a struggle to try to find her warrior, her inner warrior, because she got ripped of everything, not just her child, but Los Olvidados, her freedom. And she's just a broken person right now. Um, she, her actions are animalistic and volatile. And she has to, to really reconnect with that warrior part and try to find the lie that she, that she always had because now she's in a deep, deep hole that she has no idea how she's gonna get out of that. Yeah, I, I think similarly with Miguel, uh, you know, when we first met Miguel in season one, we saw him as uh, intellectual, strategic, uh, you know, very controlled uh, character. And, uh, you know, also putting family first, you know, and having, having a solid relationship uh, with his wife. Uh, and when we enter season three, uh, not only does he feel the guilt of his mother's suicide, uh, but, you know, his marriage is crumbling around him. Uh, you know, he's lost Devante. Uh, and so he, he doesn't really trust anyone. Uh, so in a way, there's a certain amount of, um, uh, you know, solitude uh, that he's feeling, which I think we've all experienced throughout COVID. So it's a very, you know, um, universal uh, uh, position for him to be in, but that also makes him uh, incredibly suspicious and volatile. Uh, and so, you know, we find him in a place that we've never seen Miguel before. So it, for, for both of your characters, which was great that I, I got to talk to you both at the same time, it seems like you guys are going to have to be a very defensive and I'm very aggressive because of the state that the events of season one and two. And then even that crazy uh, just idea of closing the border, which has completely turned everything upside down. Uh, is, this, is this season possibly going to be more violent, more brutal than what we've seen before? Yes, a <laughs> lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's gonna be different in, in so many ways. And I think it's gonna be a more raw violence, a violence that comes from within the characters. And that's dangerous when you have that rage and that um, when they're really scared, that's when that violence can come out in so many different ways that are really, really dangerous. And I also think one of, one of the centerpieces of this uh, season three is that uh, the season is in incredibly character-driven 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially when compared to season one and two. Uh, and as an actor and as a fan of the show, it's something so incredibly exciting uh, to read on the page and, and then uh, to be able to be on set sometimes for some of those scenes that I'm not in and, and just revel in what the cast is doing this season. I, I mean, I, I really do think that it's a watershed season for this show. And Danny, what do you think it's gonna take, if possible, for, um, for Miguel and Emily to, to, to get back on the same page? Is that even a possibility? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, it, I, think, I think that any good relationship is built on trust, right? And, and they have such a lack of trust. Uh, you know, it, it feels like, you know, especially last season, Miguel has a, has a scene with Nestor where he says, you know, we, we've lied to each other so often. It feels like every time I lie to her, I get something, I get a lie in return. Uh, so at this point, we don't even know where we started doing that. So how, how do you reconstruct uh, a firm foundation? I think that that is their challenge. Carla, for you, you spent so much time taking care of, of other children with Los Olvidados. How is having your own child now going to affect those priorities going forward? Um, I think I'm a, I'm a mom. Um, I have a 18, 18 month uh, baby and I, I can connect with uh, Adelita's feelings so, so deep now about being a mom. And I can't even imagine have my, my child ripped from, he, from me just in the moment that, that he was born. So I think she has to find a way to decide if she's gonna continue the fight for her kid and for all the other kids or if she cannot do that anymore, if it's too much for her and she just needs to let it go and, you know, just go to another side, I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've had, I've had another the privilege, place. I've, I've had the privilege of, of being able to preview uh, some of the third season. And I, I find myself on edge because I feel like any of your characters can snap any time uh, uh, but going a little bit more into the production side you guys talked about a little bit what was it like for you guys to film under under COVID protocols what what was different and what did you guys find most challenging <laughs> that's a nice mask it was a lot like it was a lot like this Emmanuel it was a lot like that you know it was we were constantly uh protecting each other uh, so that we can continue doing what we do. And I think a lot of that credit goes to our crew uh, who are constantly on set uh, in all manner of temperature and climate, uh, in rain and high winds, late nights, early mornings, uh, and constantly being tested uh, within the pandemic protocols. You know, it, it, uh, I think it's, it's really a symbol of what this crew accomplished. Uh, you know, we as actors, you know, certainly had to test all the time and we had to keep our distance and we had to keep things in mind when we were away from set so that we wouldn't bring anything to set. Uh, so there were certain uh, sacrifices made there, but by and large, uh, it's really a testament to uh, the perseverance of the crew. Carla, Danny, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Uh, as a journalist, as a fan, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, and we look forward to seeing what's coming up next for your characters. I hope the best for both of you. Uh, thank you thank and you. stay safe. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you. you.